member from Edmonton, Mill Creek. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the Assembly. It's an honour for me to rise today to speak for the first time in this Assembly as the member for Edmonton Mill Creek. I'd like to extend, first of all, my very belated, sincere congratulations to you, Mr. Speaker, and to you, Madam Deputy Speaker, on your elections to your demanding positions. I've thought a lot about how much we all appreciate your encouragement for all members to remember that honesty, integrity, and decorum play such a major role in the MLA job description. I'd also like to congratulate all of the members elected to serve in this 29th Legislature, especially those who, like me, are here for the first time. I especially want to congratulate our new Premier, or not so new, but our Premier, Rachel Notley, for her vision and her leadership. As we begin the second session of the 29th Legislature, I'm hopeful that we'll all be able to weather the storm of the current economic and energy downturn. The speech from the throne outlines some very positive measures to help us persevere and prosper. There are so many people in the NDP who have inspired and helped me in this journey to this place that I'm not able to mention them all, but I will state my heartfelt and genuine gratitude to all my volunteers. And I'd also like to express my high regard for the hard-working volunteers in Edmonton Strathcona, who served as wonderful examples of how to be politically effective. And also, I'd like to thank my predecessor, Mr. Gene Swadeski, for his 22 years of service to the people of Edmonton Mill Creek. His graciousness, his generosity, and his warmth of spirit were inspiring. I'm honored to know so many wonderful people. I'm frequently surprised when I stop to realize that I'm here in this distinguished building charged with representing the people who elected me, the citizens of Edmonton Mill Creek. That realization leaves me grateful and determined to fulfill my duties to be an active and involved representative for my constituents. I'm only the second representative in this constituency, as it was formed in 1997. The constituency that I represent is a diverse one with a growing population, many of whom are newcomers to Alberta, and changing boundaries as development continues to move south and east. The oldest of the Mill Creek neighborhoods is Kaniski Gardens, which was developed, began in the 1970s and moved on from there, while the neighborhood of Bissette was developed in the 1980s. The neighborhood of Jackson Heights was developed after 1990. And what's interesting about Jackson Heights was that it was named after Annie Mae Jackson, who became the first female police officer in Canada when she was appointed to the Edmonton Police Department in 1912. This is pretty significant the day after International Women's Day. So we have Annie Jackson. The largest residential part of the constituency is the area primarily developed after 1995 and known as the Meadows, which is made up of seven neighborhoods, Larkspur, Wild Rose, Silverberry, Laurel, Maple, Tamarack, and Meadows. Edmonton Mill Creek supports many active businesses. The oldest business or residence in Edmonton Mill Creek is the Mill Creek Nursery, which operates from a 100-year-old family farm within Edmonton city limits. In a country atmosphere, complete with a big red barn, it provides a great selection of trees, shrubs, and perennials, as well as decorative gift and garden decor, a coffee bar, and a children's play area. 80 acres of field production are being maintained, meaning that they also have a wide selection of large ornamental trees. Mill Creek also supports several breweries, one of which, Labatt's Brewery, is the fifth largest brewery in Canada, and one, Alley Cat Brewery, which is one of the new artisanal breweries. Edmonton Mill Creek is the home of many light industrial businesses also, ranging from plumbing material suppliers, building suppliers, petrochemical analysis companies in which oil and gas samples from northern and central Alberta are analyzed. 
There are a myriad of a variety of other businesses and services in the constituency, such as a television studio, which I toured, and several small radio stations, which I visited during the election. In the not-for-profit sector, one of the newest buildings in Mill Creek is the combined Meadows Library and Recreation Center, a facility which demonstrates the ability and willingness to collaborate to create something truly new. The remaining part of the constituency is made up of light, large light industrial parks with some scattered residences in mobile home parks and acreages. Interspersed with the development in this area are a number of ponds and water flow collection sites, which are occupied by waterfowl, fish, and a variety of mammals in the surrounding grasslands and treed areas. What you see throughout the constituency is a variety of buildings and many open places and green spaces. What you don't see are high rises and office towers. Now, the question arises, how did I come to be the MLA of this growing and dynamic area of Edmonton? And it all began many years ago. My family and I moved to Edmonton just before I started school to a small house near Hazel Dean School. Our house at that time was on the block farthest south in Edmonton. Right across from us was a farm complete with cows, which I found as a small child quite fascinating. We had no city utilities because it was too far south at that time, but there was so little affordable housing then that even a very basic off-the-grid house was welcome as it allowed us to live and work in the city. Memories of living on the outskirts of a rapidly growing city came back to me when I drove around a new neighborhood in my constituency and I saw the houses being built on the eastern edge of the city with very few amenities in place yet. I felt that I had come full circle from my early years and I felt again the sense of being on the edge of civilization. I come from a long line of travelers and adventurers with my knowledge of family journeys going back as far as the early 1800s when one family branch came from Ireland, another came from Germany and a third came from England. They all settled in Ontario working in various occupations and providing their children with good educations. Many in the next generation headed west. My grandfather left Ontario in the late 1800s, first to take part in the gold rush in BC, and later to take up ranching in southern Alberta, where the village of Schuler is now, near the Saskatchewan border. He did well on the drowning Ford ranch, raising a family, helping to support his brothers going through medical school, and serving of a, as a justice of the peace. I still remember the pictures of him and his neighboring ranchers taking their cattle, their Texas Longhorns, through the dip after they'd been brought up to Canada on a cattle drive. Another grandfather and grandmother came to Alberta from Manchester, England, settling in Medicine Hat to work for the Canadian Pacific Railway. They lived there, raised their family, contributed to their adopted community for the rest of their lives. All of these people left their settled lives looking for something better, knowing that they would probably never see their homes again, but believing that they would find opportunities and eventual success in their new lives if they worked hard and never gave up. I'm not that kind of adventurer, but my travels have taken me all over Alberta, where I've worked, lived, and raised my children. I come from Medicine Hat in southern Alberta, near the Cypress Hills, <coughs> Excuse me. moved to Edmonton at an early age, and as an adult, lived and worked in Edmonton and throughout northern and central Alberta. I've stood on the ed edge of Lake Athabasca, beside the Cairn, commemorating the fur traders and explorers who once lived in that area, watching the sun set over the frozen lake, seeing snowmobiles hauling sleds coming off the lake in winter, following trails marked with small trees across the lake, up the Canadian shield that flanks the lake and into the town of Fort Chippewan. A long distance away in southern Alberta, I've stood at the top of Horseshoe Canyon in Cypress Hills, looking over into the Montana hills. In the Rocky Mountains, we've seen mountain sheep who chose not to move off the trail to make way for hikers, bears, both black and grizzly, who luckily were reasonably shy of people, elk, 
lots of them, the occasional coyote and eagle, and even a marmot and pika or two. I've been fortunate enough to have flown from Fort McMurray to Fort Chippewan, and have been truly amazed by the amount of impact humans have had on the landscape. I've also heard stories from local people about the changes they have witnessed in the North and how they've been coping with the changing world. I felt very privileged to have traveled to the places I've been to and believe my travels have led me to learn about many different ways of living. I was not particularly political as a young person, but I did believe that everyone should bear some responsibility for ensuring that our fellow Canadians are cared for, with the poor and the vulnerable being most in need of our care and protection. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. These words reflect what I believed, and these beliefs became the foundation for my social democratic principles. After I retired from teaching, which had taken up a good portion of my life, I was able to become involved in politics as a volunteer for NDP campaigns and as a member of a constituency association. I also joined the Canadian Federation of University Women, an organization that's been working since 1919 to improve the status of women and to promote human rights, public education, social justice and peace. To support education, they raised money to fund bursaries and scholarships for female University of Alberta students. I've been involved in, uh, this is CFUW, Canadian Federation of University Women, I've been involved in their active environmental group as well, looking at environmental issues such as how the neonicotinoid class of pesticides affect our bees, with the resulting information and conclusions shared with other CFUW members. CFUW provided me with the opportunity to meet and talk with women doing research in many different fields, such as the effect of climate change on the northern environment, the history of Chinese restaurants in Alberta, and the role played by fungi in the pine beetle devastation. In addition to work and family, which are always my priorities, my pre-retirement life focused on academic achievement involving doing graduate work, doing a master's degree, completing the work necessary to become a registered psychologist, while my post-retirement life has focused on applying my learning and experiences to issues that affect people in a variety of ways. This transition helped me to make the move from teacher and psychologist to politician with the skills of listening, learning and understanding being constant throughout. I was first invited to run as an NDP candidate in Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo in 2012, where I learned how to talk to the media, and I ran again as a candidate in Edmonton Mill Creek in the 2015 provincial election. Meeting people in my constituency and listening to their concerns gave me the resolve to work hard to be elected so that I could represent it them in the legislature in Alberta. My fellow MLAs are stalwart, supportive and compassionate people. I feel incredibly lucky to be one of such an assembly. When I was preparing to write this speech, I looked for inspiration and found some in the words of former MLA Marie Lang, who wrote, as a social democrat, a feminist, an academic and a new democrat, I have a dream and a vision for a world founded in compassion. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to address the Assembly, and thank you, fellow members of this Assembly, for listening. Thank you, Honourable Members. Any questions under 29-2A? Honourable Member from Stone Red Deer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to congratulate and thank the MLA from Edmonton Mill Creek for her maiden speech. I enjoyed it very much. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask the member from Edmonton Mill Creek, since her new role as MLA, what are some of the challenges and concerns that she is hearing from her constituents? Thank you for the question. This is one that I've been hearing from a lot of people, with it being such a new constituency 
all the services are basically growing with the, the development. As people come in, then they're provided with services. So what we're seeing a need for is schools. A lot of the schools are already showing, even though they're very new, they're showing signs of being overcrowded. And uh, parents naturally are worrying about what they will be looking forward to in a few years. So instant, uh, for instance, a, a parent with a preschooler was asking me, well, what will I be expecting in a few years when my child enters school? And it's a good question. I visited one of the newest schools <coughs> in the constituency a few days ago <coughs> and had some good conversations with the teachers about the portable classrooms or manufactured classrooms, but basically portables, which they're using already to be able to make their school be adequate, adequate uh, provide adequate space for the new students coming in. Now, one of the things I'm pleased to say is that visiting in the constituency and doing my work last year as a university facilitator, <coughs> I was able to go to a lot of schools to supervise student teachers and I saw some incredible work going on in the schools, so that was, that was a really positive part. The worrying part is getting enough schools up and running quickly enough to meet the needs of the people moving into the area. Thank you.